Welcome back to Hey Kentucky. Those hoping for college football, at least in three of the Power Five conferences, still have their fingers crossed and their breaths are being held, but even that might not help. To talk more about that, we've got uh, renowned Lexington Herald leader, sports columnist, John Clay. Thanks for being with us, John. Uh, thanks for having me, Mary Jo. So there seems to be three holdouts, at least right now, the Big 12, the ACC, and the SEC. Is there any thought in your head that those three conferences are actually going to play football when the time comes? They're going to try. I mean, I've said all along, I thought there's so much money involved that they're going to try. And I think they're taking it slow. Like FCC Commissioner Greg Sankey said the other day, they bought themselves a little bit of time because they moved the start of the season back to September 26th. They're playing a 10 game conference schedule with a couple of breaks in between. So they're going to try. I'm skeptical as to whether they can uh, get to the starting gate. And if they do get to the starting gate, whether they can complete a whole season, those three leagues seem determined to to at least try to get, take it as far as they can go until the medical people say, okay, it's time, you, you gotta stop, this is not gonna work. So presumably all these conferences and athletic directors and university presidents have been talking with medical professionals. What did two conferences hear that these other three conferences haven't heard yet? That's the big question. What did the Big Ten and the Pac-12 hear that made them shut it down and have the SEC and ACC and Big 12 have they not heard the same thing or have they heard it but they're willing to give it a little more time? I think it has to do more with the heart uh, conditions or heart ailments that some of these uh, kids who have tested positive for COVID-19 who then developed a heart condition, whether it's myocarditis or something like that. That seems to be the sticking point with the Big 12 and excuse me, with the Pac-12 and the Big Ten. Uh, I noticed earlier today, Greg Byrne, the Alabama AD, who used to be at UK, he was Mitch Barnard's assistant at UK, was asked about that. And he said that they had no uh, uh, players at Alabama who have tested positive, who have shown signs of having myocarditis. So I think that was the big thing that shut it down. Uh, I've got a friend at Ohio State that I talked to who said that, you know, that was the story there they thought uh, was kind of the red flag. Uh, so I think that's the thing. And, Either the other conferences haven't heard about that or they're willing to give it more time to see how it develops. It appears that some conferences are trying to listen to players, which uh, it's probably just the appearance of that. They're not really truly listening to what the players want to do, probably. <laughs> but uh, I guess my question is, these guys, a lot of them do want to play. There are pretty serious inherent risks in the game of football anyway. Take the virus sure. out of it. Long-term impacts... Certainly there's been study after study that shows that is a possibility as well. What do you see as the difference? Well, I think the difference is probably the spread. You're absolutely right. I mean, there are risks whenever you play football. There are, long -term, there are possible long-term health risks. Uh, obviously, CTE is the one that's gotten the most attention. But those things you don't spread to another person. There's also, and there's, you don't get them from another player, get them from the contact. In this case, I think that they can do a pretty good job of keeping the players themselves who play on the team, as Greg Sankey called it, a quasi-bubble. But what happens when they go out and mix with the other students, which is, you know, I think is inevitable that's going to happen and then the contact of playing another another team i think those are the risks that that are involved the other factor has got to be a legal you know a liability issue and i i think it's not just the medical people who are talking to the conferences it's also the legal people as well and we don't know for sure what they're telling them but i'm sure that's figuring into the equation as well and the, the positivity rates in a lot of the states in, in the South are quite high right now. Kentucky is actually doing pretty well, relatively speaking. I do want to ask you one more thing. There seems to be uh, this presumption that sports writers, sports media, sports broadcasters don't want the season to happen because they want to be right about coronavirus. Couldn't be further from the truth. Right. You know, I, I, that doesn't make much sense considering, you know, our jobs are pretty much dependent on we're sports writers. We like to have sports to cover. I mean, there's not the probably the best part of our jobs is covering the actual games, going to the events. But we can't be rooting for the games to happen just for the sake of ourselves. We have to present, you know, ob objectively both sides of the argument. And, and I think that's what we're trying to do. I think it's like everything. I mean, sports are so emotional. You get emotionally attached to the team, the coach. The coach gets emotionally attached to the team. They want to do it. Obviously, that figures into it as well. So I'm sure Big Ten and Pac-12 fans, you know, were upset when the season was canceled. They were looking forward to it. So it's obviously emotions come in uh, and come into this as well. John Clay from the Lexington Herald Leader. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Go read his stuff. It's always good. Thanks, Mary Jo. All right. We'll see you soon. Hopefully more Hey Kentucky right after this.